Hey kids, you're listening to the internet's wettest podcast about video games, consoles, and pancakes. The SML Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is the SML Podcast. I am your host, Joe. Joining as usual, we've got Aki, Jacob, and Bree. How are you three doing? I'm doing pretty good. I finally got my tooth fixed. Uh, Ooh, yay! Good. How, yeah, how'd it, it go? Well, it took uh, exactly two hours. Mm. Uh, I had to get six entire shots of numbing agent throughout the entire process. Very good. Uh, and I ate earlier today and it hurt like a motherfucker. So, you know, it yeah. still hurts. So back to soup. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go back to ramen tomorrow. And yes, it still hurt. And I don't know why, because there shouldn't be any nerve endings in it anymore at all. Uh, is it the know. same tooth hurting or is it a different one? It feels like the same one. Yeah, then they it still do feels a root sensitive. canal. <laughs> Yeah, it still There's- feels sensitive. My mom said that's, you know, sometimes it does that for a couple of days regardless. So I'm yeah. hoping that's mm. just something that happens for a little bit and it goes the fuck away. I hope. Well, the important so. part is to make sure you're watching for signs of infection or anything because, yes. you know, that, that's definitely something that could be causing pain if it's prolonged. So, yeah, yeah they put a temporary crown on it. So I figured. It'd be just fine at that point, just mm. in general, unless that came off or broke or something. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about this stuff. This is the first time I've ever had a crown. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I know someone you could talk to. You, I assume? Not me, actually. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what was that about, Jacob? <laughs> it's like, well, I have somebody you could talk to. Oh, is it you? No. <laughs> yes. uh jacob how was your week uh n- apparently not memorable cool Bree, how was your week <laughs> uh it has been full of doctors and a headache that won't go away otherwise great yay Actually, good, good all things considered so yeah <laughs> i'm sorry the headache hasn't gone away i've had one of those in my life and it's yeah sucked. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually got to meet with neurology uh, yesterday. So, like, in theory, sometime soon we'll be addressing, like, why does why does Brie always have headaches? Like, always. This one's been, what, a week straight now almost? Jesus so, Christ. Yeah, it just will not go away. So, yeah, super fun. I've had one headache in my life, and it made and it made me vomit. So I I do not oh, envy you. Yeah, at I all. have those all the time. Only had one in your life, just one headache. Yep, I envy wow. you. Yeah, yeah I've, I was going to say I've also I like, never had uh, brain freeze or anything either. Oh, well, yeah, you I have to have can't a freeze. Brain. Not that, uh, yeah, Jacob and I are. No, yeah. like I have I have different kinds of headaches, <laughs> and I can I can name them all with with specificity to like you know the 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 different subcategories of whether it's uh, a one oh, type wow. of migraine or another or if it's a sinus headache or a tension headache or if it's related to neck pain or y- yeah yeah there's different ways to treat them all as well like there's there's no consistent thing and sometimes i i wake up with the headache and i don't know how it happened so i just have to run through the list of remedies and see what sticks and then i know what headache it was based on what works I just went to sleep and I was okay when I woke up. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> That's it. That's all I, I know. I usually just drink lots of water and, you know, take some tile and all and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that worked. I just live off Excedrin migraine sometimes. My headache yeah. just doesn't go away. I thought you, you lived off of Spite. More often. <laughs> no, Spite Mountain Dew and Excedrin. That's how I mm. live. I also live off spite. <laughs> we have so much in common. We should have a tea party. 
We should Ooh, have a tea yes. party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jacob could bring the stuffed animals. Oh my god. No. Well, no. We would just use your cats. No. Fair. Fair. <laughs> mm-hmm. Put little hats on all of them. And bow ties. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, bow ties. We can felt hats out of their fur. All right, that seems a little gross. <laughs> the, the fucked up thing is Ashley is starting to, like, keep uh, their fur when brushing uh, them. I knew it. <laughs> she she has plans. She won't tell me them because every time she does it, I give her looks like she's crazy because I she's was. keeping our cat's fur. Fellow crazy but- cat person who's also a felter, you totally do that. <laughs> it's just a thing. All right? Listen. <laughs> I really hope yeah. like she builds like an entire cat out of uh, their hair. She just builds us a sixteenth cat. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What do you mean? Si- Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean sixteenth? Where did you get fifteenth? I thought you were at fourteen. No, oh, fifteen. <sighs> okay. Simon was fourteen. Petunia's fifteen. Oh, I forgot about Petunia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, PD yeah. tunes. See, the, the the bad thing is. <laughs> to create a new cat out of the hair of the old cat probably wouldn't take that long with just no, the sheer like amount of fucking cats you have. You'd be able to make tops. one every month. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's that's scary. Y'all could have, like, an army of cats made out of just cat hair, and that's weird. You want to know what else is scary? Yes. Jacob's I just The amount of oh. bad news in the past week. Oh my gosh, right? There is so much bad news. Like, there's good news and bad news. We should probably get into the news. Should we start with the good or with the bad? Let's do the bad so I can feel bad it, real quick and then feel bad. That better. makes sense, because if we started with the ugly, then we'd have to talk more about Aki. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, let's see. The ugly <laughs> and the bad. Uh, layoffs have happened at Telltale again. Oh, shit. Seriously? Yeah, that news came out in in past hour or so. Uh, The studio claims all projects are still in production, uh, but the one guy who was laid off said that he can't comment on Wolf Among Us 2 due to an NDA, so that worries people. Uh, Yeah. No comment is usually bad. Yeah, it really is. And and honestly, the expanse was like really That was good, really fucking but it, good. I don't yeah. know how well it performed. So I know a lot of times people will wait until the whole thing is out. They don't like the episodic uh, purchases, you know, and waiting for it, but the whole content's out now, so Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, but hopefully hopefully they could recover and projects could keep coming out. But uh, there are reports that Sega's canceled Hyena Project was allegedly the biggest budget game in Sega history. Oh. And it's scrapped. Yep. And they had another unannounced project that was also scrapped, I think, with that news last week. Yeah. Crazy. And kind of a bummer. Apparently, the game it was what, a looter shooter? Mm, it was yeah. supposed to be a looter shooter, but then it was also like a heist thing too um and from from what i had read it was like the game had no real direction um Mm. and they took the characters and tried to make them like edgy and memorable and they ended up becoming the same edgy and memorable characters that every looter shooter has and so it it was just gonna get it was just gonna get lost in the genre yeah, if you want to read more about it, uh, our, our good friend Doc Havoc spent some time with the game and talked about it on our Discord. Feel free to drop by there and check out what he had to say. Uh, but yeah, canceled games, never fun. Yeah, no, that sucks. Also not fun is getting arrested. Five former Ubisoft execs were arrested after the year-long sexual harassment investigation. <laughs> A spokesman told Game Industry Biz that Ubisoft has no knowledge of what has been shared and therefore can't comment. Well, on top of it... um, Sounds like good news to me. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's good news, but I mean, the fact that Ubisoft is tied to it is not good news for Ubisoft. Right. But two of the people, uh, they only named two of the people in uh, two of the five, Um, and two of them are definitely like, you know, it's the two former execs um 
I couldn't find anything on the other three. Are, like, are like, is it sure that they actually are from Ubisoft, or are they just related to it? I didn't read much into it. Oh. Yeah. Ubisoft hmm. has no knowledge, and I have even less. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I have another layoff news since we were talking about that earlier. I don't know if oh, uh, shit. Sure, yeah, hit us um, with it. <laughs> Worms publisher Team Seventeen uh, CEO has left the company amid restructuring and some layoffs that are that are going to be going on now through all of that. Supposedly left amicably, but whether or not he was laid off or left and that caused this whole thing is unknown. Oh, that's oh well. Yeah, just it's uh, it's going around though, for yeah, sure. Good stuff. Uh, not good. Ubisoft added de novo anti piracy measures to Assassin's Creed Mirage via a day one patch, and after reviews already went up, upsetting many people who are concerned about the novo's effect on performance. Hmm. Do you think that's a massive that's a, issue? That's a, yeah, that's a shitty thing to do. I know a, a lot issue. of people don't like it, so. Yeah, it we don't slows deal with down it on your console. game. <laughs> yeah, for for Steam games, it has a tendency to really slow down games, mm. and quite frankly, since they never really get rid of it, all it does is punish people who buy it legitimately. Because obviously, when people take the you know four or five hours it takes for them to hack the game any fucking way, uh, all of the people who chose not to buy it just get a better game because they don't have the Nuvo crap in it. It always pisses people off to have it because Denuvo well, they is... Do remo- some it. companies do remove it after a while. Yeah, Ubisoft doesn't, though. I don't They've know. They've had it for a few of their games, and as far as I'm aware, they're still on all the games. I have no clue because I don't PC game. So. Yeah. Yay. Uh, Nintendo announced they're shutting down all online services for the Wii U and the 3DS in April 2024. Mm. Doesn't shock me. They they got rid of the yeah. store, so that was a generation of console I completely missed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. More shutdown news. WWE 2K22 servers will be shut down January 3rd. Game's not even getting two years of life. That yeah, that seems a little soon. Exactly. That's some bullshit. It- is that not a game that has like a yearly release? Yeah, but still, a year and a half later, they shut it down. Yeah. I just assume games that have yearly releases close within a year or two. <laughs> no, just the shittier ones, I guess. Oh, that's a shame then. Not the shitty game, just shitty decisions. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't like it. They they need to keep servers up longer than a year and a half. Uh, especially because the game will probably still be viable. You just can't play it online or have any online content. Yeah. That's stupid. Uh, uh, Gran Turismo Sport is ending online services January 31st. I don't even hmm. know what that is. That's the one that came out on PS4. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Matters to a lot of people, but... Yeah. A uh, ticket to ride in all DLC will be removed from the Xbox store in April 24. That's, uh, I if I remember is. correctly, that is only for the Xbox One version. The Xbox 360 one's made by a different company. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they're supposed to be making a new game. Is Correct. Part of the behind that, that would, in theory, not have all of the DLC nonsense. It would just, but who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I I bought the two ticket to ride games for my wife because uh, the game was prohibitively expensive mm. a couple of Christmases ago, and we have yet to ever play either of these games. Mm. Proud of you. Thank what you. are they <laughs> even? I've never heard of ticket. Based to on ride. a board game. Yeah, um, involving trains and shit. Where's it's Purnell? One of those, we need no. Purnell for this. I was going to say, it's one of those games that, um, like Catan, you you may lose friendships over very quickly. Um, <laughs> Wait, is it pronounced yeah. Catan? I thought That's it was Catan. I was, I've, I've pronounced it that way, but I mean, what else? Oh, no. What if I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years? You probably have. I know. <laughs> I say Catan. Oh. There you go. Shit. Catan, Catan, tomato, tomato. 
It's fine. Potato Let's call the whole thing off. Never mind. No. Batman Arkham Trilogy has been delayed to December 1st on the Switch. Okay. Oh, well. They're still getting it. It's fine. Yeah. Just delaying it a little bit. Uh, and then the last bit of bad news I have leads into the good news. The bad news <laughs> is Hunt Showdown will be ending support for the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game come April. The good news is it's getting a free upgrade to Series X and S and PS5 for current owners. Oh, that's awesome. <gasps> Does it come with a free Froger? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Can I ask if it come with a free what? Froger. It's a Simpsons skit. Oh, okay. I thought you were asking if it came with like free yo- like frozen yogurt. I'm like, well, that is that is Froger. what I said. Yeah, but you- it's Froger. Oh. Oh, I, I don't know. I, get, I don't really watch <laughs> The Simpsons. I, I grew okay. up without it, unfortunately. That is odd, but okay. No, nah, I, I, my dad was a pastor and uh, so somewhat conservative. And it was part of fair. like the whole, like, you know, oh, Bart Simpson is going yeah. to like upend American family yeah, values. A former blah, First blah, Lady blah. totally like had to come apart about The Simpsons at some point. It's been around <laughs> that long. So, yeah, no, really, I get it. Yeah. So they later became best buds and said president uh, of the first lady ended up on an episode. It was fabulous. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm hmm. Anyway, Game Pass. Good news with Game Pass. A lot of games coming to Game Pass. Well, not a lot, but big games coming to Game Pass. Uh, this week alone, we got Gotham Knights Lamplighters League and Warhammer 40K Dark Tide. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of excited about Gotham Knights because I'm gonna like I I tell myself I'm gonna finally check it out. Uh, You're not. Well, I, thanks to all the games I have to review and Disney Dreamlight Valley still existing. Um, for, yeah, have I'm you just not 100 percented that game yet? You can never 100 percent it. The story keeps going. October Bell 10th. And Be- <laughs> Bell and Beast are supposed to drop at some point soon. Like you'll always be my beast, Jacob. Uh, you'll oh always be my Ursula, I guess. Uh. <laughs> when they have Nightmare Before Christmas, let me know. Oh, well, actually, uh, right now on the Star Path thing right now, you can actually earn a bunch of uh, Nightmare Before Christmas uh, stuff. You can have Jack Skellington's uh, suit, uh, the little hill thing. You can add that to your uh, terrain. Um there's a couple of uh, town. there's a uh oogie boogie uh like costume that you can wear including with his camel toe um <laughs> and uh there's like a few other things uh rumor like rumor had it that uh jack skellington was supposed to join like around halloween this year i think they're just testing the waters and they'll do it next year fair oh and there is a sally costume that you can buy i yeah, I don't. I don't know how you get it. Like, I I think you have to have like the moonstones or whatever it is, moon coins, what whatever the fuck. I don't know. I was never big on Nightmare Before Christmas, so I mean, that's okay. Yeah, like I think, like I get why people like it. It's just it's not my bag. At Disney Dreamlight Valley, certainly. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> I, anyway, you speaking have, of Joe, really god. has no idea how many times this summer. I like was giving serious thoughts to be like, yeah, man, I think I'm just going to take like a couple months sabbatical and <laughs> just play Disney dreamlight Valley and nothing else. I'll still do the posts for you, but, uh, I just won't be on the show. <laughs> like Good Lord. that happened. I'm not going to lie. That happened probably about once a week over the summer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so Joe, just be forewarned. If I ever leave the show, it's not it's because we had a dream my valley. It's not because we had a di- like a disagreement and I hate your guts or anything like that. Or you kicked me off the <laughs> show. He does. I just left to go play Disney Dreamlight Valley, and one day I'll be back. <laughs> sure, Dad. All, I hope not. <laughs> I'll come back with a carton of cigarettes for you. <laughs> <laughs> Got the milk. Uh, October tenth, Forza Motorsport is joining. Game Pass, if you have the premium upgrade or if you bought the premium version, you can play it now. Cool. Oh, cool. Yay. I'm already playing it now. Wait, Yay. is that embargoed? The game no, is it's out. out for premium. Yeah, it's out. Yeah, right. Never mind. Never mind. 
dingus. October twelfth <laughs> from space is hitting Game Pass. What's that? I don't I think it's a new game. Oh. I don't know much about hmm. it. Interesting. Yeah, and then October seventeenth, like a dragon, Ishin is hitting Game Woo! Pass. Hell yeah! Yep, I'm excited. Another game I need to buy. Oh, no, it'll be Eventually. on Game Pass. So you could play it that way. I'll end up buying it anyways. I really like <laughs> the Yakuza games. I have to all of them, I think, except for the two Judgment games. <laughs> Judgment's okay. Like I, it, it's it's similar enough that it's like okay, you'll be fine with it. But there's also enough differences that you're like, this should just really be its own series. Well, Instead of a the, spinoff, it's a spinoff. I was about to say it's it's a spinoff. I mean, that makes it like, its own series, this, does it not? Not <laughs> no, well, no, because it's part of like the like the yakuza, yakuza, whatever you want to call it, universe. Like, I mean, like I would, I would just have it be its own thing. Like, not even in, mm-hmm. not even in like the universe. Like, gameplay is quite a bit different. Mm, okay. Anyway, with Game Pass, there's got to be some games leaving, so there is a little bit more bad news. A uh, handful of games are leaving with Shenzhen IO and Overwhelm leaving Windows, and then Evil, The Legend of Tianding, Truck to Yomi, and Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion also leaving Game Pass on October 15th. So play them while you can. That's a shame. I love Turnip really- Boy. It's on my Re- list. Yeah, mine too. Very short. Oh, good. Evil Maybe rings a bell, but I don't remember anything about it. Um, I think that's isn't that the one yeah, where it's kind of like a uh, wolves among us or werewolves among us or something like that. Were, mm. Werewolves within. What the hell's the name of that game? Who? Yeah, I don't know. One of those like town deduction games, I think. Uh, yeah. Good point. Anyway. New Turnip Boy is going to be day one on Game Pass, so also yay. There's a new Turnip Boy game coming. I didn't yay. know that. Interesting. Yes. My cat is like all over my desk today, and I don't know why. Mm. Did he destroy your stuff? Attention. Uh, well, Diablo 4 is hitting Steam October 17th. More people will be able to play that. Nice. Uh, Nintendo announced Lego Animal ugh, Lego Animal Crossing sets are going to be a thing. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, in Movie Watch news, Sony Pictures has a Sony Pictures Core app hitting the PS4 and PS5 that comes with a lineup of hundreds of movies that you can buy or rent and exclusive benefits for PS Plus Premium members. I believe uh, premium members have like a certain streaming list of free to watch content, but I haven't messed with the app myself yet. Okay. Well, it's nice that they're getting something for basically kind of for free. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's another benefit. So good for them. Uh, and then the last bit of news I have is all pinball news. Uh, Pinball M, Zen Pinball M has a new table announced for that whenever it releases with Duke Nukem's Big Shot Pinball coming to the platform. So Duke Nukem All right. and balls. Yeah, balls that makes of sense. Steel, literal balls of steel. That happening. makes a lot of sense. I wonder if they got John St. John to do voices for it. <laughs> I was, I was going to say it would be uh, pretty swell just to hear all of those, you know, absurd things. Yeah. Yeah. South Park Pinball is returning to Pinball FX on October 12th. I think I mentioned that last week, but your pinball news might as well bring it up again. And then uh, one more pinball bit. Zen announced Game Night Pinball Volume 1 coming to Pinball FX, which includes three tables of board games. Pinball tables. Terraforming Mars is getting a pinball table. Gloomhaven is getting a pinball table, and Exploding Kittens, a pinball <gasps> cat astrophe, is <gasps> going to be hitting pinball FX. Someone okay. sounds excited. That, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm, More also, pinball. I'm also a board game nerd, so yeah. I've oh. never heard of that one ever. <laughs> and then uh, Root Beer is saying that the demo is out for Pinball M. So if you have Steam, you could check out the the demo for Pinball M. I need to I need to download that. 
I want to see what's on there and what makes it pinball. M. But yeah, that's the news I got. Aki, what kind of news do you have? I just had the uh, arrest stuff, so. Oh, Bree, what kind of news do you have? I got two things. One, um, Alan Wake 2 news. They will not have performance mode on Series S. Um, that's the second such departure from the rule that the X and S have to have the same, you know, like matching services and content, um, Mm. you know, with Baldur's Gate decision. So that's a little bit interesting, but sad news for people who, you know, opted to have an S over an X or weren't able to get an X and are now, you know, having an S that, that some of these decisions are going to continue coming down the line, maybe, um, so hopefully they'll be able to find some other way around that. But um, yeah, I'm um, surprised that's the one that they're not getting. Isn't that the one that they should want is make it perform better than I, make it look better? I'm not better? really sure. Uh, I, that's just uh, that's weird. That's just Yeah, something just wasn't working right with the architecture, I guess. And I, uh, is it that it's not getting a specific performance mode or is it just that it's only going to have one mode? So I think it's, it's only going to have, it's not going to be for performance. It's just going to be, this is what you got. It's not part of the parody clause is what them are saying. Yeah. Mm. I, I just pulled this up like right before stream. So I, uh, I didn't get to read too, too much into it. Just was an interesting point, I thought, given the parody clause conversation with like Baldur's Gate 3 and that sort of thing. Like, I'm wondering, you know, if this is the, the opening for future, future stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think performance stuff would come down to the parody clause just because Fair. of the difference in hardware where you can't really yeah. have yeah. the extra frames or whatever on the, on the S. Oh, what else yeah. you got? Uh, well, last week, Sony got some sort of supposed ransomware attack, uh, saying that they had breached all the systems, uh, and they kind of seemed to publicly take it in stride, like, oh, you know, we're, we're looking into it, like, it's no big deal. But this week, they now have a confirmed data breach for employee info, nearly 7,000 employees' uh, personal oh, info has been uh, released in the breach. So if you hadn't already heard about uh, that, uh, it sounds like that group might have, in fact, uh, managed to get in and uh, get some information. So if you haven't already changed your password, you might want to do that as a precaution for yourself for any future things that might go on while they are dealing with that. Sony data breach. Didn't we cover this like a decade ago? (laughs) I was pretty sure we covered it. Yeah, Yeah. this is not the first. (laughs) Gotta love it. Reruns in the news. Uh, Jacob, what kind of news do you have for the week? Uh, Well, folks, this is a very special 10th anniversary week Uh of Mighty Number 9 reaching its Kickstarter goal to release a 3DS version. Okay. How's that news? How's it news? (laughs) Well, I'm just saying it's the 10th anniversary. So we're still waiting for that 3DS version of Mighty Number 9. Pretty sure I'm starting to think we canceled it a I'm, while ago. I'm, I'm start. I'm starting to think it might not happen now, Joe. Yeah, you have a good good lead on that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I'd be I'm more gonna name my, if anyone Joe, actually still wanted it. To be honest. Joe, I'm not going to name any of my sources. You know, I got to maintain my journalistic integrity. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Um, The only other thing I have to report is that a Lego Animal Crossing collab has been confirmed. uh, And it looks like next year. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, he disappeared earlier. I I, I had to. I almost had a fart that came with a prize. (laughs) (laughs) That's a way to put it. (laughs) So, uh,. So that's why I quickly bounced because I was just like, oh, no, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is the stuff we have to work with for fuck's sake. Oh, man. Oh, my God. A fart that came with a prize. <laughs> God damn, Jacob. <laughs> I said it almost came with a prize. <laughs> we thought oh, I had a way to do it. So, so anyway, yeah, yeah, I guess that's the news. Should we dive into our reviews? Well, uh, how do I follow that? <sighs> I don't know. How do we follow that? Oh, I know how we follow that. We follow it with a first look 
at Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, codes provided to us by Ubisoft for the purpose of this discussion. Hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, uh, hashtag Ubisoft, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Developed by Ubisoft Bordeaux, published by Ubisoft, released October 5th on Xbox One, Series X and S, PS4, PS5, and PC for $49.99. Experience the story of Basim, a cunning street thief seeking answers and justice as he navigates the bustling streets of 9th century Baghdad. Through a mysterious ancient organization known as the Hidden Ones, he will become a deadly master assassin and change his fate in ways he never could have imagined. Uh, we're going to take a full look at this next week on the show, but we wanted to take a quick first look. Uh, I've put some time into the game, and Bree, I know you played it last night. Uh, what did. are your thoughts on this so far? Uh, so I think the the first thing that I was really interested about, um, kind of seeing what they were doing with this, is the conversation around this idea that they're trying to go back to their roots in the game and what that was going to mean for gameplay while still trying to maintain this modern feel. And I really enjoyed the 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 pro the extended prologue. There's there's the prologue you get the achievement for, which is like an hour and, and change. And then there's the like second part, which is also a prologue and has a second <laughs> title sequence. Uh so this there's like, you know, a uh, I, I I don't really know, and that's that's about where I I, I ended. I did a little bit of uh, open world play, um, and that's all I had time for. But um, I I I see some of exactly what they're saying so far, where you're getting back to the the games that kind of made the the franchise, like going back to Assassin's Creed Two, and some of that feeling in that format, and not just because of the actual historic time and place settings for the game but also kind of some of the the way the game plays and and it was neat that they they went back to artistic choices with the middle eastern from revelations uh in terms of how we found like uh some of the secret um assassin headquarter kind of places that you find inside the city looked so similar you had to enter them in the same way there was the return of like the little um, a rooftop curtain boxes that you can jump in and out of and and just it's a lot of really familiar things a lot of really good throwbacks to stuff but it has all of the modern accessibility features and functions that we have gotten you know improved over the years um, they took a lot of time to focus on those accessibility features as well and uh, that was kind of neat to see. I was reading um, an article on that, and one of the things that they 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 made a departure from was relying on color so much to differentiate different, um, you know, physical identifiers, notifications, and that sort of thing. And they relied on different shapes and and things to act as indicators, which you can see in like. Um, Valhalla, where they have like a a sun looking shape, and you know, and like all these different things. Um, so they they've really taken different steps um, to make accessibility. Uh, uh, they they removed you can remove quick time for things like pickpocketing in this one as an example too. Just oh fuck yes. So yeah, for people who really struggle with that, um, there's there's definitely a lot of um, opportunities for people to get into this if they've maybe been afraid of it before. And additionally, I would say story wise. Um, I think that this game can be accessible as a kind of introduction to the series if you've not gotten into it. Uh, because of where they've placed the story and the characters, it's so far, you you will know more information if you have played Valhalla, if you have played Origins, you'll be able to get deeper lore if you have all of this information. But you, because this takes place about 20 years before the events of Valhalla, you're really not missing any major story points and you could just jump in as someone kind of new to the series or completely new to the series and this could be your first introduction and i think it would be a good one uh, i have a couple questions for you mm -hmm. one is there a present day bit to this one or is it just all i have not stuff? gotten that far into the story to know if there is a present day story and believe me i am looking forward to diving in and finding that this weekend all right. And I've, I've put about 
six, seven hours into the game. Granted, a lot of that is exploring because that's what I do, but I have not seen any present day stuff. I, nice. I can't confirm that there's nothing in there. There might be further into the game, but I haven't run into it yet. So. Okay. And second thing, what all accessibility stuff is in there? Because you did mention the uh, getting rid of quick time events. And anything else in there? So let me open up the article. I can post the article to you in the Discord if you want. Sure, because um, I, I don't have the game yet, so oh, I'm, I'm yeah. waiting for mine to I get mean, here. <laughs> one, of, one of the first things that surprised me, when you first open the game, there's actually a text-to-speech <coughs> immediately that says, would you like menu narration turned on? Um, nice. So that's not a thing you have to go looking for if that's an, you know, an accessibility feature that you need. They have uh, more colorblind filters. They have, let's see more stealth and detection meter. So that was actually something that I noticed. Ooh. You can actually see a cone of vision uh, on guards when you're in an area of high alert, uh, as well as uh, circles of, um, you know, like influence or, or however you want to phrase that. There's crosshair improvement. Again, you can have varying types of closed caption. They actually added something about music frequency, which I, I was kind of like amused, but also I kind of understand why you would do that. Um, not only can you turn off the music or change, you know, like a normal volume settings bar, they have a lot of fine tuning in there, but you can reduce the frequency in which the background music plays or, or turn it off entirely. And I, I think that that's interesting because one of those things that you, you know, you hear repetitive music, even if it's something kind of sweeping and low in the background, can get really irritating to people. And especially if you're dealing with like um, a younger <coughs> person playing a game, uh, adults tend to be irritated and there's actual like physiological reasons for that. So I thought it was just like a neat thing that that was even added in there. Um, they've got varying things for motor accessibility besides the... Um, uh, guaranteed pickpocket, you know, quick time removal. They've got some aim assist options. They've got some quick tool options, control remapping, the whole the whole nine. So I'll go ahead and post that link there to their article in the Discord. God, I can't wait for this to come in for me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with my time so far with it. Uh, there are some things that I'm not happy about. Uh, first and foremost, at the very beginning, there's like a 30 second long Assassin's Creed 15 video that plays like as part of the splash screens mm -hmm. and it's unskippable. You can't skip mm. like I've sat through that yeah. that intro video like a dozen times now. And every time I'm just mashing the button like I don't need to see this. I get it. It's the 15th anniversary. You don't need to show me this clip every time. Second, and this is a bigger issue microtransactions launched mm. with the game uh mm -hmm. and it's not just like one <laughs> there's like five of them so far there's a deluxe pack there's an assassin's pack of different outfits uh there's a weapons pack of lightning weapons uh there's an uh, what is there's a, i think a poison there's um yeah there's a poison pack uh, poison pack and then there's a dope ass fire pack which comes with <laughs> a, a really cool looking armor sword uh a dagger horse. the horse looks fucking cool uh, yeah the I, horse does i am the sucker that paid 15 bucks for that so there is a market for it i don't like that i paid 15 bucks for it but i did <laughs> there's also a map pack uh, yeah which is that shows what, all the collectibles of, on the map yeah, yeah. It, it'll be what they refer to as a time saver uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I I don't mind those. I'll I'll drop. I will totally use map. those in Horizon like all day long. <laughs> Forza Horizon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, buddy. I buy the treasure map immediately. Yeah, they're like Forza three bucks. Game. Like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so the the amount of microtransactions is worrying, and I worry how much more is going to come in the future. Uh, like if if it's if that's it for a while. Okay. Oh, it won't be. It won't be. But They're going to keep releasing skins constantly, just like they did with everything since, like, Origins. <laughs> on, on the plus side, this is just <laughs> real money transactions. You don't have to pay for in-game currency and then use the in-game mm -hmm. currency to buy other stuff. 
you're just paying money for the stuff, which I prefer over having, you know, extra unity bucks that I can't spend mm-hmm. or whatever. Like I, yeah. I hate when you have leftover currency and you can't do anything with it. <laughs> Yeah, they do yeah. that on purpose to get you to buy more of the currency to buy more of their stuff. Yeah, which is why I prefer what they're doing with this one. But again, we will talk about everything more in depth next week. Uh, but for now, Bree, is this something that people should be keeping their eyes on or, or should we wait a week and listen to our final verdict? I, within a few minutes of getting control of my character, I was able to pick up and snuggle a cat. It's it's definitely keep your eye on it. <laughs> oh, have I. That's that's some harsh criteria. <laughs> All right, moving on. Next game to talk about is Anthology of Fear, developed by Oh Dear Studio and 100 Games, published by Ultimate Games. Released October 4th on Xbox One, Series X and S for $8.99. Take part in a one-man investigation and solve the mystery of your brother's disappearance. Find out the truth by exploring unsettling liminal locations. Discover the story chapter by chapter with each one unveiling their common tragedy. Uh, Bree and Aki, both of you dabbled in this. Bree, how about you start off? What is Anthology of Fear? So it's psychological horror, first and foremost. Um, I would say that there's, you know, a little bit of gore. There's a few jump scares. There's a tiny bit of light body horror. But mostly it's intended to be psychological horror. So... You know, odd angles and and darkness and things to kind of, you know, bring up the tension um, as you're trying to unravel the the mystery of what's going on. We start out being led by some, like over like a walkie-talkie. We're being led around and instructed how to break into a facility. We're looking for our missing brother. And uh, eventually, after we figure out some puzzles and that sort of thing... Uh, we find a tape, and that's how most of the, sto- the the actual story content is presented, is as if we were watching um, like found footage of mm. of the the people that were running across. Um, but then we kind of move into their shoes and continue playing the game um, as them. So we get to be Nathan for a little while running around and seeing what he sees. Um, and it's a neat concept, but I don't know that it was really well executed. There were points in time where I forgot that that's what was going on, and I was very confused um, when they were referring to me as Nathan, and uh, I was like, oh, right, I jumped into, I'm watching a tape. Okay, yeah, I guess. Um, and and the story in general kind of felt a little disjointed, but overall, I mean, for what it was... We get to see cool, weird guilt hallucinations from tortured psych patients. I mean, that's cool. <laughs> um, actually, actually got me, got, like a total got got me on a jump scare. It was probably not supposed to, but I, I totally had a minor jump scare from a mannequin, and I am not jump scared easily. Um, there was a couple of points where I just wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing, and eventually figured out... During a point with some teeth pulling what I was supposed to be doing. And, uh, but that was, it was about as frustrating as trying to pull teeth. And (laughs) that was, yeah. Uh, but eventually I got there and got through the story and then, um, unfortunately ran into a bug. Oh no. And it's pretty game breaking. So I have not been able to complete the story. I think I was right near the end and, um, Unfortunately, oh. there's a section with a load that uh, dashboards me. But we have contacted the publisher, and they're aware of the issue, and they're looking into it. Yes, so, they, they said that they are uh, working on hopefully getting a patch out. I Did you test it today? Is it still happening today? I, I, I tested it today on both systems, so it was not oh. isolated to one console or the other. Um, but yeah, so I and I, I did get a little further uh, in in into the load, but uh, ultimately every time it still dumps me to the dashboard. And it's during an actual load sequence. It's a it's a load sequence that leads to a load sequence that should load into the next room. Like there's like a mid sequence, and you can see like there's a little like save icon or something or a load icon. And uh, yeah, it's during a load sequence or yeah. Fun. And it just doesn't. Aki, so yeah, you... I sadly haven't finished the story. Aki, how much did you get to dabble with Anthology of Fear? 
I got a little over an hour into it because I was expecting to do this next week, not today. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, so I got into a rush trying to play some of this. I've played mm. an hour, hour and a half ish of it. Um, I'm obviously nowhere near uh, uh, to the point of breaking, pro- probably. I expect i have no uh, no idea how long it took you to get to what you think is near uh, the end it, of the game yeah it's it's toward the end of tape two is my best guess so okay i'm still in tape one gotcha. um it and I, it's just because kinda... you like the clip so much <laughs> thank you i love that clip Surprise, bitch! <laughs> that one not as much uh <laughs> I just really like her voice. It, it's just it. She just seems real fun when she says it. Uh, but anyways, um, so I'm not as far. Uh, however, there there's a couple things that I guess I'll bring up. Um, mm-hmm. The game does get kind of confusing on what you need to do. Yep. Uh, you can push the left bumper button, and it'll bring up basically a hint thing that tells you, hey, this is generally what you're supposed to do, but then you still kind of have to figure out what the fuck you're doing. Um, Mm -hmm. So it doesn't exactly hold your hand, but it does give you at least hints on what to do. Uh, Not that that makes a lot of sense, because, again, the game is just really weird with the things that are going on in it. Um, Like, for instance, the first area where you go into the hospital, like, it's like, oh yeah, you need to go to the hypnotist's office. It, it's not just a hypnotist; they're actually called Doctor Hypnos. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to find their office, and it just tells you you have to get to their office. It doesn't tell you what you're looking for in there. So I just clicked around until I found actually the first tape. Uh, but I had already been in there, and I didn't pick it up. <laughs> I had yeah. went there before I, I went where I was supposed to go beforehand. So it is in Quint sequential and you cannot break the sequence of what you're supposed to do if yeah, it says I would say the, the, it's kind of fairly linear as far as like your play area which is good because it makes it easy to kind of eventually stumble across what you're supposed to do yeah and, and it also forces you not just in the play area but what you're doing in it it makes you do very specific things um mm-hmm. Like, uh, as I said, how it had the tapes were in that room. I went to that room before I went to an archive, which is where you're supposed to go beforehand. And mm-hmm. then you don't find the stuff in the archive. And you're like, oh, let's go to that hypno- Dr. Hypno's room. It's like, I was literally just there. What I found I- the archive. It was the wrong archive. It was the employee yep. archive, which, yeah. But, but, it, but thankfully, because I found that, I knew what to do later on in the game. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the last thing I guess I'll bring up is uh, if you have uh, have light sensitivity, mm. um, pr- probably don't play the don't play the um, almost every single light in this game street light lamp light it don't fucking matter if it's a light it flickers like a motherfucker. Uh, yeah. Uh. I, I remember the game opening up and it, it gives you a warning that, hey, if you're yeah. photosensitive, this can this can cause seizures. And like it immediately opened up looking directly at a red light that was uh, flickering something fierce. Mm-hmm. And it was in a bit of a cutscene where you couldn't move or anything. And you have to just kind of sit and look at it for a little while. Um, yeah. Yeah. It kind of sucked. <laughs> the the head bob was pretty aggressive too, so I turned that off. Um, it's and turned it was that very, off. It was very dark, and I had to turn the gamma all the way up. Yeah, the game is incredibly dark. You are given a flashlight for parts of it, but not parts for all of it. of it. It's kind of random, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, so I have my gamma up, I think, all the way as well. <laughs> yeah. Which nice. uh, really, really doesn't help when lights start flashing. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Those are kind of, you know, the exact opposites of what you fucking want in the situation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was really the only thing I would mention. So yeah, if you if you're photosensitive, I definitely would not involve myself in this because a lot of flickering, constant, yeah. lots of flickering. Um, 
Well, for the for the people who are okay with the flickering, don't have the light sensi- sensitivity issues, and are aware <laughs> of the crash, the game is nine bucks. What do the two of you think of it? I'll let you go first. I was gonna say, like, I I'd put it in a like at least to try it, um, given that they eventually fix uh, or you know patch that so that we can finish the game. It's still a decent like. This is a fun little, you know, horror story that we can kind of run through. Um, that's it's it's fairly middle of the road. So I mean, I just kind of put it right right there at the middle of the road. So good old fashioned try it. Uh, for yeah. the people hanging out in chat, you still have a few more minutes. We're giving away a copy of this thanks to Ultimate Games. So if you want to try it out for yourself, uh, enter away and maybe maybe you'll win. And if you're listening mm-hmm. to this. After the fact, via MP3 or on YouTube, you missed out. You should probably hang out with us on Thursday nights and Tuesday nights because we do a lot of giveaways. And uh, for me, Hmm? uh, I feel much the same. I think it's a a try it. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Well, Bree, that is it for you. We will let you get going so you could uh, tackle your stream tonight. What's on the docket for you? Well, I have still never managed to run over all the people I need to run over with a tractor, so I am uh, gonna go back to that. Murder. I know, I know. I'm, 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 st- I'm really proud though that I did manage to punch a bull with my fists to death. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 there's that. That was yeah, but what are you doing proud, in games? Proud mad moment. <laughs> all right, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go run people over with the tractor. Uh, or something. There, there will be shenanigans, chaos, explosions. Uh, that sounds like a solid time. Yeah, yeah, and I get to do it, you know, hanging out with one of my best friends. So, yay! yay. <laughs> well, we will let you guess what, Aki. That's not you. <gasps> <laughs> Gasp! All right, Aki has no well. reply. <laughs> she like went off to the bathroom or something. Oh, actually, I had myself muted and I didn't realize it. <laughs> oh, How so you? now after the reviews, at now after Bree's reviews, like you finally mute yourself so we don't have to hear all your. I key, usually all your, mute uh, myself. All your all your mouse clicking. Great. Well, for news, I don't <sighs> care if you hear it, and it's controller clicking, motherfucker. <laughs> And it's because I'm playing the game we just reviewed because I was <laughs> rushing it. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you're told in the morning, hey, we're going to push this to next week and then get told like <laughs> an hour, be- a little over an hour beforehand. Oh, here's the lineup. But you said we were pushing that. Oh, yeah, we decided not to. Motherfucker. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, it happens. It just, it happens. <laughs> Like that. Exactly. I have a new I have a new sound clip on our wrestling board that they didn't even hear yet, but this is for Jacob. Go fuck yourself. That's fair. <laughs> I approve. I approve wholeheartedly. Oh man. All right, Bree, we'll let you get going. You have yeah, yourself I'll a wonderful know. night. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. All right, next game to talk about, Payday 3, code provided courtesy the Deep Silver Creator Collective, uh, developed by Starbreeze Studios, published by Deep Silver, released September 21st on Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC for $39.99. Payday 3 is the much-anticipated sequel to one of the most popular co-op shooters ever. Since its release, Payday players have been reveling in the thrill of a perfectly planned and executed heist. That's what makes Payday a high-octane co-op FPS experience without equal. Uh, Jacob, tell us about your time with Payday 3. Uh, so Payday is an on currently on, o- online-only uh, multiplayer game. Uh, so you will have to like log into the servers and stuff like that so you're able to play. Otherwise, you're just stuck playing the tutorial uh, just so you have a heads up. Um, you are going to need other people to be able to play this with. Um, they, they do have bots, don't they? Like, I'm, I was... No. They don't have bots? Are you fucking I don't kidding bull- me? I never found any, unless, like, I was looking in the wrong places. I think you were looking in the wrong places. Should we delay this one? Um, I guess. I mean, like, I mean, I got a few games in online. Like, 
Yeah, well, so, I, I, I mean, I could tell you, I could tell you about how awful I am. Yeah, and, uh, actually, about how you know, awful you are. <laughs> planning, I, planning I the know, heists. Uh, there, I actually, did no planning on my part. <laughs> to, to be fair to Jacob, there might actually not be bots. Actually, um, now that I'm I thinking about it, I could have sworn that there were, but it's possible well, there might not be. The only uh, reason I, know I don't th- think there is is because uh, they were thinking about because of how bad all the connection issues have been for this game's entire existence that they were planning on creating a single player mode so you wouldn't have to play it online, which leads me to believe there might actually not be bots yet. Huh. Well, anyway, okay. Uh, so Payday, uh, is a multiplayer shooter game, uh, that, yeah, I mean, you can run and gun if you want, but there is a lot of stealth and tactics to this whole thing, which honestly I was a tad bit surprised with. And I should mention that this is also my first one in the series I've actually played. Um, (laughs) so you're not missing uh, anything. It's fine. eh, I don't know. Like I, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I, I do kind of wish that there was like an easy mode that like, you know, if you just want to like go fuck up shit, you can, uh, cause even on normal mode, I was getting my ass handed to me and like my teammates had to come save me a couple of times. Um, also that's another thing. I highly recommend having a mic for this game. Uh, that way you can communicate with your teammates and they know what's going on. Um, I mean, but ideally yeah. you're going to go into this game with a group of friends. That's how payday is best played with a group of people that you know and trust so you could talk and plan and and work together going into these games without any kind of voice communication is just a recipe for disaster which coincidentally most of my time was <laughs> so uh so there are a few maps uh with different like objectives that you have to do and it's usually just like go in steal the stuff or steal, go in, uh, break in, uh, steal the stuff and like deal with the cops as they come. And then eventually escape, uh, however you have to escape. Um, and you can usually assign, like, I mean, as you're discussing with people, you could just say, all right, this guy's going to do this. These two are going to be lookouts, uh, or just like, you know, they're just going to be the ones constantly shooting while the other guy focuses on this task. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And the whole entire time I just got relegated to shooting people because I was not useful for anything else. We know. Um, <laughs> I actually got, ar- I, I somehow fucking managed to get arrested in a, uh, um, not public. Uh, what? Oh yeah. I think it actually just is called private. I actually managed to get arrested in a private area. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is supposed to be like the guards just escort you out. Like that's all that they're supposed to do. I fucking managed to get arrested there, which was great. Uh, and one of my, uh, one of my teammates had to break me out. But um, so, yeah, so all of these, uh, I mean, if you really mess up, like you can easily lose in five minutes. Um, but the game length could be surprisingly long. Like uh, I had a few that were going like 30, 40 minutes. Uh, as we were dealing with the cops and all that kind of stuff um, and breaking into everything. And the game is very chaotic and there are tutorials that you can use uh, to help train your, you know, get used to everything um, and including like how to deal with security, how to deal with crowd control um, and pretty much any of them that didn't involve you just shooting things i failed i actually failed the tutorials for them um (laughs) for fuck's sake yeah yeah there's nothing stealthy about my uh my way of getting things done um (laughs) and so yeah it's just uh it's just like all right you break in like you get the stuff and it's like you have like your operator call like uh, talking to you and being like, all right, the cops are coming. The hostage rescue team is coming. And eventually you like, you start getting like weird enemies. Like there's this like ninja, like SWAT guy who will come in and like kick you in the face. Um, and then I just shot him in the nuts repeatedly, uh, until he died. But, um, those nice. guys are a pain in the butt. Uh, but yeah, it was just like, it's intense. It is chaotic. It is fun. Um, 
like even when like we lost like i was still having a blast um i just wish like i like for us noobs like who this is like the first one in the series i wish that there was like not as steep as a curve on this game uh for everyone because it was frequently like uh the other players knew what they were doing and i was just completely lost as to like okay what do we do next like what like how do i do this um yeah but like it's it's a lot of fun so if like you are like if you're a big fan of multiplayer games i really recommend checking it out like the first week uh was definitely played with multiplayer connection issues like i uh, I actually couldn't connect to anything during the first week. Uh, however, this week I had almost no problem finding a match. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. So I think, I think they've ironed th- those issues out. Um, but the map variety is kind of fun. Um, or like it's, it's enough to like everything looks different. Um, it's just really, it's, it's like that, uh, that um, Dungeons and Dragons game that we reviewed a while back. Like, you know, it's just, you got to have like a group that like, uh, you know, that you can play regularly with, uh, and just, you know, fuck shit up. (laughs) So, (laughs) but yeah, like I was like, even though I was almost always regular, uh, relegated to like, you know, just shoot the bat, like just shoot the cops kind of guy. Um, I was still having a lot of fun. So the game, if you like shooters, all right, well, the game clock's in at 40 bucks. It is also a part of Xbox Game Pass. Uh, what is your verdict on this one? If you're already familiar with the series, I'd recommend it as a buy it. Uh, if you're not, use Game Pass to try it. Um, as I said before, there is a steep learning curve uh, with some of the stuff, especially the stealth. Like, I, 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 I mean, I've, I've always been shit at stealth, but like this made me feel even worse about my skills. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Next up, Infinity Strash Dragon Quest: The Adventure of Died. Uh, <laughs> code provided to us for this review by Square Enix. Uh, again, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, hashtag all that fun stuff. Developed by Game Studio, Kai Graphics, and Square Enix. Published by Square Enix. Released September 28th on Series X and S, PS5, and PC for $59.99. The memories of the hero in your hands experience the story of the legendary anime series Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die and the exhilarating action role-playing game that combines stunning visuals with art from the anime and manga. Uh, Aki, tell us about your time with Infinity Strash, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. Okay, in this, you play as a child named Die. Uh, he is training with Master Avon, I believe is uh, how you pronounce that, uh, to become a hero, basically. Uh, this guy is a hero of legend. He's trained a number of students to be heroes of justice. Uh, and alongside him is, uh, I think it was Popo, uh, another apprentice that's a mage, whereas Dai is uh, a warrior basically. And uh, some shit goes down and evil decides they're going to take over the world and uh, Master Avon dies. So you decide as die that you're going to uh, go fuck up the bad guys because you're a hero and they're evil. So obviously. Um, And they, the bad guys very quickly start taking over the world and you very quickly start knocking them down like dominoes. Um, this follows, uh, both the, uh, anime from the eighties and nineties, as well as the more current one from the, uh, 2020, I believe it was. Um, and it, it has three different game modes, uh, well, not modes, uh, mission types, I guess you'd call it within the game. Uh, there are story missions that are literally just story. They are just cutscene after cutscene after cutscene, and they are part of the story. You have to watch them all to get to other types of missions. Uh, and I believe for the first like hour I played the game, over 40 minutes of it was just the that type of watching the story mission where you just watched cutscene after cutscene 
after cutscene and doing fuck all. Um, <laughs> and every time they have those, they tend to have a bunch of missions in a row that are just that instead of having you, you know, play it like a uh, what's it called? A video game uh, <laughs> like, you, you know, the video game we're playing. Uh, which is to me kind of problematic because they're there, as I said, when you hit them, there are a bunch of them all in a row, uh, and they're pretty prevalent in the game. Uh, I am in chapter five of, I believe seven and more than half of the missions have been just watch cutscenes story missions, which I I'd like to play the game more. Um, personally, I think it's more interesting when you actually get to play and fight. Um, then you got main missions, which, uh, is where you fight in them, which are great. And I thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, sorry about that. There was a bug that got near my foot. Um, and, uh, you, in you main missions. want to know what got near us? I don't know how to segue this, but a uh, big shout out to Trash Rando and to, uh, No Time. Fucking yeah! Selling. I'm so sorry you guys wasted so much money. Yeah. Uh, I thank them. Heartily. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for your so, support. Thank you for the subs. Uh, more like fartily. Out. Yeah, fartily. Ah. Uh, Dragon Quest, what's going on in this? So in, in main missions, uh, you that's where you do the fighting. Um, sometimes they're small things where you basically just fight a boss. Other times, you know, you have small arenas where you go and you just fight everything until it's all fucking dead, which is fantastic. Uh, usually they have a cutscene or two before or after or both um, uh, in it. And then you have uh, side missions, which are my favorite ones, because all they are is just go into it and beat things up. There is no cutscenes. You just go there. You just fight things. And life is better that way. Um, <laughs> and so throughout all of this, you're you basically start in the middle of a fight uh, with. Uh, you're called the Dragon Knight. It's your special power thing, and you're fighting another one. Uh, you're one of two that exist on the planet, and there's only supposed to be one, so I guess it's Highlander time. Uh, and they kick the shit out of you, basically, and then you start back at the beginning of the adventure, going through the history leading up to that point, and then passing it, um, and seeing the rest of his, of Dai's adventure. Um, so most of what you're playing in this game is actually dies past. Uh, so you're, you're, you, you see when Avon dies and you start the journey and yeah, uh, there's seven total chapters in the game. I haven't gotten through all of them. Uh, each chapter gets, I believe, progressively longer considering the uh, chapter four had like 20 different uh missions in it well most of them again just story um there's uh you level up in the game but you also unlock cards that you can equip to each individual character um and you get those through mission progress as well as through another game mode that you have in there and basically, the cards just give you different abilities. Um, they might be like, oh, this card gives you plus 35 health. Or this card might give you plus 20 attack, plus 6 defense, minus 30 magic. Or, you know, stuff like that. Sometimes they'll even give you special abilities. And sometimes if they're equipped to a specific character, they'll give that character something extra special that they wouldn't get if it was equipped to someone else. Which is cool. Um, and... You can get these cards and you can level them up uh, through the uh, Ricul... Uh, how is it pronounced? Uh, basically through this tower. I don't remember its name. I'm sorry. Uh, even though I, I've been in it so much, I should have its name down and I don't for some reason. <laughs> uh, and, and basically what that tower is, is it's just like, oh, you have a, a floor that's just... You go in it and you fight through a certain amount of levels, and everything you pick it up in it, if you get to the end, you can go back to the entrance, and you get to keep it all. If you die, you get to keep fucking nothing, uh, and try again, better luck next time. Uh, <laughs> the things you get in this are Amber, that? I have no idea. What is what? Your phone, I assume. 
No. Other people in your house. Something. I'm the only one downstairs. Uh, then I have no idea. Is something uh, beeping on your end? No, I don't hear any beeping. Hold Since on, let me he take isn't off my hearing head- it, it has let, to be let me, him. Let, let me take off my headset real quick. Uh, uh, but yeah, basically in the tower you get amber, which is used to make your cards better. And you also get copies of cards as well as other cards that you didn't get in your missions. Uh, and basically you require both amber and extra copies of these cards in order to level up the cards. And the cards can level up 10 times total, uh, each one requiring more extra cards as well as more amber to upgrade it. But they, again, they change it to where, like, maybe you start off with this card, gives you 15 health, but once you upgrade it, it gives you plus 20 health. And when you get it up to the end, maybe it's plus, like, 100 or something. I don't know. Uh, Haven't gotten any of the cards leveled up that high, because it takes a lot of cards uh, after the first, like, four or five levels. (laughs) Uh, And, yeah. So you get to equip these uh, as you level up uh your care each one of your characters uh in the main game but in this tower you can equip all f- uh, each character has yeah! five cards they can equip you can use them immediately uh in there uh each card can only be equipped to one person uh which kind of sucks uh because there's one card that's really nice that gives you like plus 50 experience and i would really like like four copies of that just to hand out to <laughs> one to each of my characters because that's amazing um, but, uh, in the main game, you actually have to level them up and every like, yeah, something's definitely level. coming through your end, Jacob. All right. I'll, I'll log out and see what I can figure out. I, it sounds like it's beeping or feedback or something. There's just sounds some... like it's a clock to me. That's playing some weird melody or something. I thought it was like a music box or something, but yeah, there's like squealing and I, I don't get it. Uh, what we do get, though, is a sub from Thimber, who subbed for the fifth month. Uh, and then, Jacob, apparently you th- you subbed, but I didn't get a notification for it. So, I think you're lying. I'd believe it. <laughs> that he's lying. Uh, that is. Anyway, um, Dragon Quest. But yeah, so you have all these cards, and you level up in the main game in order to equip more of the cards until you have all five slots. Uh and yeah, that's that's really a majority of the game. You can also, you know, uh, throughout the main game, you also get other abilities uh, that you your each character can use, be it magic skills for the mages or physical skills for the other characters. Uh, you can upgrade those in the tower as well uh, with money and uh, some random jewels and stuff that you can also find in the tower, but you also get a lot of in the main game. Uh, those also level up to 10. They don't, they give you a little bit of increase each time. It's not amazing or anything. Um, if you're playing it on easy, you really don't even need them. <laughs> you don't need to upgrade anything, really. Because when they say easy, they made this just a cakewalk. And it's fantastic. And I love it. Um, I walk through things and I just obliterate everything. Nice. Uh, the t- the tower, however, is not played on easy. What difficulty you put the game at is not what the tower is at. So that's a uh, ha ha, fuck you, good luck, have fun. Um, and I really <laughs> like it because, again, there's no story in this. It's just go in, fight these like eight levels to this floor, go to the next floor, do the same thing and just get as far as you can and hopefully don't die so you can exit out and keep all the stuff you got. Um and it's re- I really like it. I've put a lot of my time into that because it is really fun. And I just I want to level everything up all, all the cards. I want to get them all to level 10 just because I can. Uh, and so like that, that has been a pretty good focus of mine. Uh, anytime I feel like killing myself from sitting through all the story missions that it requires you to go through <laughs> one after another between fights. Um so yeah, I, that thing has been a godsend to me. Um, that 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 is probably my biggest problem with this game is there's just so many story missions where it's it's just story, and it's like just just let me play, let me play. Slash, it's this is a video game. Slash. <laughs> exactly, it's a it's a video game. I want to video game this. This isn't the the, the TV show. This isn't a movie. I <laughs> I want to play. Um, most of the game. Uh, 
all the cutscenes for the most part are stills from I assumed the anime, but maybe also from the manga. I haven't read the manga, um, so I don't know if it's colorized or not. But it takes stills from everything. Uh, occasionally, there are a few cutscenes that were made in the actual in-game engine. Um, and obviously, they have drastically different visual designs. So, yeah, um, that's really all I have to say about it. Cool. Well, the game clocks in at 60 bucks, And uh, again, code provided to us for this by Square Enix, which great to see a new Square game on Xbox, by the way. Very happy that we were able to cover this. Uh, what are your thoughts on this for 60 bucks? I say if you like Dragon Quest, uh, especially if you like the Adventure of Die, um, you're going to absolutely love this. If you're not really into the Dragon Quest series, I'm not sure how much you're going to enjoy this just because of how many story missions there are. Uh, so I think this is a try it uh, to if you really like the Dragon Quest series, definitely buy it. But for everyone else, it's a it's a try it at best just because of the sheer amount of here's a bunch of cutscenes for like the yeah. next hour. <laughs> But a lot of story, but a fun yeah. game underneath. Yeah, like the, the combat is real fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I love the tower because that's just it's, it's great. Nice. All right, next up is Paleo Pines, developed by Italic Pig, published by Modus Games, released September 26th on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $29.99. Welcome to Paleo Pines, a charming island known for its friendly dinosaurs, quirky town folk and mysterious past befriend dinos and enlist their help to fix up your ranch and farm crops to create your cozy dino sanctuary then set out with your companion lucky to uncover the island secrets jacob what is going on in paleo pines do i sound okay now yes okay cool because i had to restart everything um all right so paleo pines uh is it's an interesting mix of like an adventure game uh, and farming sim uh, or farming management sim, I should say. Um, almost just like Animal Crossing with dinosaurs, but there's more to it than that. Um, and so with Paleo Pines, uh, you get invited to come back to this property that uh, one of your family members owned. And like all of these types of games, the whole place is in a wreck. Um, and so you have to start cleaning it up, uh, with the help of, uh, your dinosaur lucky, a parasolof, par parasolophus or something. I don't, you briefly see them in, uh, Jurassic park anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so as you're getting your lay of the land, uh, you get to meet a bunch of the town folk, uh, and they are, you know, I don't say like anything extravagant, but like standard characters, like there's the granny, there's like the guy who seems to be like a fix it for everything. There's uh, a brother and sister duo. I think they're brother and sister uh, who like live over, like in the next town over that occasionally communicate with you, but also seem kind of hoity toity. Um, <laughs> and like a few other people that you can interact with. And, uh, as you go through the game tries to take your hand a little bit and is like, this is how you do Like, this is how you farm stuff. This is where you get your water. This is like, you know, this is how you plant your seeds. This is like, this is how you're going to use your flute to communicate and give your dinosaur orders. Uh, which is then later on helpful when you get other dinosaurs to become friends with, um, who then want to hang out at your place. Um, and on I top wish of dinosaurs it, dinosaurs were to hang out at my place. It's, you, I almost called you my oldest son's name. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was like, we don't have room for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe, you don't have room for it either. <laughs> but I want uh, a dinosaur. No, <laughs> but oh, it's well. cat sized. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, at least so far I haven't discovered any meat eaters. I think they're all, uh, herbivores, but anyway, um, you can wander around, uh, the land in this, uh, thing. I wish the map was better 
um, just because it would be a huge help so I could figure out where the heck everything is um, and like where to go next and all that kind of stuff. So that is a little bit of an, an annoyance for me. Um, but honestly, like you could just go through the whole place, like explore, find new plants to uh, bring back uh, along with new seeds. Um, you can find other dinosaurs. You can find mysterious items uh, that you have to collect. Um, like there's these odd sculptures uh, around there and you take notes in your journal um, and report back to your finding. Like that's how you report your findings and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's a fairly chill game. I mean, it's got the chillness of animal crossing um, mixed with the exploration of geez, I don't know. Another chill exploration. Well, um, it, it's just chill all around. <laughs> don't expect to die. Like, I, I don't like, I honestly, I wanted to compare it almost to like a Zelda kind of thing, but that's kind of far off, especially since I didn't find any dungeons and like, but just understand that there's a big, like there's a big area for you to explore, you know, you get me. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's just really a lot of farming, selling your stuff, buying new stuff, uh, like upgrading your land. Uh, so, you, you know, you can ha- house more dinosaurs and find more dinosaurs and also find out why your dinosaur seems to be the only parasol office that anyone has ever seen. Um, and apparently there's more according to the achievements, but I haven't gotten that far in it, but honestly, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I wish that the map system, uh, I just wish, like, I wish it was easier to figure out where the heck you're going. Um, and maybe that comes later in the game. I don't know, but like, <laughs> like, especially at nighttime, it gets real hard navigating around the Island or land. Uh, so like that's the only downside I really have to it. So if you're looking for something to chill to do, this is a pretty good game to check out. It's cute. It's, it's really adorable. Cute looking. I like the visuals. And yeah. Really colorful and, it, and vibrant. And, and honestly, if like you've got like a kid who's like, mm, I don't know if I like Animal Crossing, but they love dinosaurs. This is a good like this is a good alternative for that. Dinosaur. Do your kids play this one at all? Uh Sam got a little bit into it, my oldest, uh, but not like didn't get very far. So it, it, there is some reading required with it. So, uh, uh, so kids who are in like kindergarten and first grade made like they're going to need help from a grown up or a sibling. All right. Well, the game clocks in at 30 bucks. What are your thoughts on this one? Oh, that's totally worth it. Yeah. Like there's plenty to do in this game uh, and a lot of fun to be had for 30 bucks. Um, I'm actually a little surprised it wasn't more. So definitely pick it up. Sounds good. All right, next up, El Paso Elsewhere, developed and published by Strange Scaffold, released September 27th on Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC for $19.99. Stakes, guns, slow-mo, fight werewolves and vampires in a reality-shifting motel. Drive through barricades to escape the grasp of evil. Puppets, destroy the villain you loved, a new third-person love letter to classic shooters. Neo-noir never looked so good. Aki, tell us about your time with El Paso Elsewhere. Okay, and this, you play a guy who I'm pretty sure is higher than a kite. Uh, That's how I was when I tried playing it last night. I had to stop (laughs) because I couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. (laughs) Don't worry, uh, I don't know much more than you did, and I beat the game, so <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. If not, then, well, at least you have company in the what? <laughs> uh, so, it, in this, you play as a, a guy that originally I thought was a priest, but doesn't seem like a priest, but I'm pretty sure is uh, still high regardless. Uh, and he is in the void? I guess, um, because his girlfriend, well, his ex-girlfriend, uh, is a vampire and is named Dracula and is basically Dracula. And she's trying to summon a entity from beyond the veil, something that fucking hates humanity. And she's going to end up destroying the entire planet if she succeeds because she's stupid. 
because uh, she wants to make a deal with it to gain power or something. Uh, and you're just there to stop her because you are the only one there to stop. Uh, you go down there with some guns and you're like, time to fuck some shit up. Uh, and most of this is you fighting the ghouls, maybe? I don't know if they're supposed to be ghouls or lesser vampires. Uh, and then you get things like werewolves that behave more like wolves than anything. Uh, and biblically accurate angels, which were really cool. Uh, as well as a few other different things. And uh, it's just really a get from point A to point B and kill absolutely everything in between. Uh, situation. Uh, sometimes you do find new guns. Uh, I think there's like six or seven of them that you can find. Each one has their own ammunition. Each one of them you can carry a specific amount of ammunition. Uh, sometimes there's even little puzzles you have to solve, which are basically find the uh, a colored part to open a colored door. That's the uh, long and the short of that kind of difficulty there. Uh, if you have a yellow door that you can't open, guess what you need? A yellow heart. Aha! It's basically colored key cards, folks. Um, <laughs> th this this game, I was expecting it to be a real quick game. I figured, you know, maybe four to six hours. <laughs> I was so fucking wrong. <laughs> is it this a is, hefty game? Yeah, this is a surprisingly hefty game. Uh, it's much longer than I thought it was going to be. I think I ended up spending like 15-ish hours on this game, oh, wow. uh, maybe more. Yeah, there's like 30-something chapters in this. Uh, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's long. Um, for anyone, again, who is photosensitive, uh, for the moment, I would not suggest buying it because right now there are some very serious issues with uh, the environment popping in and out of existence uh, as you walk and turn and look around. Uh, they are aware of it, and they uh, I think they're, they're hoping to have a patch out, I believe, this week to solve that. Um, but some levels get, get real bad. Um, I, I had at least one seizure playing the game because things popped in and out. Uh, in uh, one of the first... Yeah, one of the first rooms where they where they did it actually, because uh, literally everything in that room, anytime you took a step or you moved, they would pop in and out of existence. So if you weren't running through that room, things just went Boo! and it was bad. Uh, thankfully, in most of the rest of the game, it isn't quite that bad. There is still some of it throughout a good chunk of the game. But again, they're aware of it. They are working on a fix. Hopefully a patch will be out this week sometime that will solve that issue um i i uh, actually talked to the the individual that we're going to have on next week i think it is you said uh, i believe i'm not, I'm not sure when it's going to be we're he was supposed to be on tonight uh Zalver nelson uh was scheduled to join us tonight but some life stuff came up and he had to postpone we might be recording tomorrow i don't know if it'll be on this episode next episode next week i don't know what i'm doing Okay. But yeah, we'll, we'll I, chat I, eventually. <laughs> yeah, I talked with him. He's the one who said there is a patch coming. Uh, I don't know if he's he worked on the solo or not. Uh, but yeah, I so, believe for the most part it is a solo dev. Okay. I I know some. I'm pretty sure I knew some of his games were, but I weren't wasn't sure if all of them were or not. So yeah, I wasn't sure if he soloed this or not. Zalavir has a, a quite a unique library of work that he's done. He did a Space yeah, Warlord a Organ Trading Simulator. <laughs> I reviewed that one. Dog and, uh, Airport? Yeah, an airport for aliens Dog. currently run by dogs. Which is pretty great. <laughs> Hypnospace uh, Outlaw. <laughs> also, uh, can androids pray? Yeah, so yeah. he... He has worked and, on some on some crazy stuff, and it seems like this one is pretty crazy in the same vein. Yeah, uh, all all of his stuff is very weird, and he has a lot of different genres he goes through. Even um, so, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, the there are cutscenes in this. Uh, usually, every couple of levels will have a quick cutscene. Uh, between them. I know in one level 
the cutscene was just the guy sitting on a couch in a motel, which are where a lot of them actually are situated, is either that or in an elevator. Uh, but like one of the cutscenes was, were those fucking werewolves? And that was it. That was the whole cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> was him just saying that. <laughs> it's like that's a good so, cutscene. Yeah, most of the cutscenes aren't particularly super long, and you know you'll get them every two, three levels thereabouts. Um, and yeah, the you go through a bunch of different environments. Uh, there, it's not like every level is its own interesting, completely different environment. You know, uh, the first whole bunch of levels are in a motel, and it moves to a completely different type of uh, location after that. Um, and then later, once they start mixing the environments together, so you might be like, oh, this is a cemetery, but over here is also a room in a motel for no reason. Because this is all of this is in the void. It isn't in an actual real location. Like the entire time your character's in the motel, they're not actually in a motel. They're in the void, um, which is taking memories, maybe, from <laughs> him. Maybe from Dracula, maybe, and creating an environment. Uh, you're not really sh your character isn't even particularly sure because I'm again, I'm pretty sure he is higher than a fucking kite. Um, so basically, are, you're gonna have a lot of questions when we do this interview. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a few. <laughs> um, this Just does, smidge. yeah, this does deal with some sensitive issues. Uh, Two main ones. Uh, it touches a lot on uh, drug addiction, because again, your character has been an addict in the past. He does talk about that stuff. Uh, part of his relationship with Dracula was he was an addict. Uh, and then a much more prevalent, uh, much more in your face, much more talked about uh, issue is uh, a spousal abuse, basically, because Dracula was not a particularly good person. Um, and it talks a, a bunch about uh, mental and emotional abuse, and it is very in-your-face, very direct about it. So if you have a hard time dealing with that, probably pass on this game, because it, especially about midpoint and later, it really, really delves into that a lot, and it does not shy away from it at all. Uh it even made me feel a little uncomfortable at points because I've dealt with bad relationships. And I was like, oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> so it's it, it handles it very well, though. Um, I'll give it that. It handles it very well because, again, it is very straightforward. Um, and yeah, they're they they are both fucked up people that had a fucked up relationship and they have to end it in a very violent way now because uh, <laughs> one of them's trying to destroy the world. Uh, <laughs> so, catharsis, I guess. <laughs> Yay. Well, this clock's in at 20 bucks. What are your thoughts on El Paso elsewhere? As long as you can handle the sensitive content uh, that's in it, I think it's totally worth buying. I really enjoyed the... Uh, the game and the story, even though a lot of it was like, I don't really understand what's going on half the time. Uh, but I think that is done on purpose because your character doesn't seem to know exactly what's going on either. Um, so yeah, I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed this game and I, I think lots of people would probably have a bunch of fun with it, cool. especially because it has really good, because I forgot to bring this up. It has really, 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 really good accessibility features. None of them uh, disable achievements, even. You can get all the achievements with, with them on. You can uh, make it to where you don't take damage, just period, uh, nice. at all. Uh, you can give yourself infinite pain pills, which is how you heal. Um, you can give yourself a pain pill multiplier, which I assume just gives you more health when you use them. And then you also have infinite ammo that you can turn on, which is... A godsend. Turn that on. That makes the game so much more fun because then you get to play with the big guns a lot, uh, and <laughs> they're real fun to play with. <laughs> and cool. yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, I know the soundtrack's pretty crazy as well. So yeah, it, it was pretty good. I actually had my music on for this game because it was so good, and it it was weird because a lot of the games have to deal 
kind of with vampirism and stuff. So anytime someone's singing and, you know, half the time they're talking about like people's corpses <laughs> and stuff. And I was like, this is so weird. to hear. Like it fits, but it's so weird to hear this kind of music. That's not what I'm used to when I li- when I listen to music <laughs> again, but I really liked it. Well, speaking of games with good music, next up is Treachery and Beatdown City Ultra Remix, developed by New Challenger and Hurricane Works, published by New Challenger, released October 4th on Xbox One and Series X and S for $29.99. Ultra Remix content is a free upgrade for Switch and PC owners, but $9.99 DLC for new purchases. Uh, after U.S. President Blake Orama is kidnapped and by ninja terrorists and Mayor Mike Moneybag shuts down the East Fulton Police Force, now suspended Police Chief Antonio Santiago can sense something bigger is coming. He enlists the aid of his daughter Lisa and her two friends Brad and Bruce to set out to discover not only the truth, but also to find out the root of treachery in Beat Down City. Jacob, tell us about your time with Treachery and Beatdown City Ultra Remix. Uh, so this is very much a retro-inspired, uh, I'd even so so much call it as a love letter, to not only beat-em-ups, but also RPGs. Um, and it is honestly a really fantastic game. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, I got my hands on this for review. Uh, so what it is, is... I mean, the plot's as you explained, but it does it with that kind of like wink and nudge uh, satire that uh, the ads in RoboCop uh, did. Well, the first one anyway, uh, that the first RoboCop movie had uh, just like making fun of like, you know, culture at the time, uh, but also, you know, uh, how ridiculous the plots of a lot of the beat em up games from that time period were. and so, yeah, so the president gets kidnapped uh, by a bunch of ninjas <laughs> in your town. And I was really hoping it was going to bust out the, like, are you are you a bad enough dude to uh, go rescue the president? But unfortunately, they didn't use that. Um, and so the game starts off in the gym where you have to learn all the basics for combat. Um, and how it works is that you move around the screen, building up your meters, Uh, And then when you have enough uh, built up, you punch your opponent, which then starts your attack. And you can choose, uh, like, whether you're going to attack or grapple with an opponent. And you can chain these, um, depending on how much points you have, into bigger attacks. That'll do, obviously, more damage. Um, And, of course, your opponents can attack, too. And so you have to decide whether, like, if you're not facing them, are you going to turn around and waste some of your uh, mana? Or are you just going to, like, take the hit and that's it? Or are you going to try to block it? All that kind of stuff. Um, And it's surprisingly well thought out. And (laughs) the combat is way deeper than I was expecting uh, with this game. And yeah, it's just you moving around a bunch of maps. Uh, sometimes there's characters in the environment that'll help you out, like they'll tell you, like, hey, go here for some supplies, or like they'll give you the latest news on the street. Um, and it's a lot of just having to beat up your foes. And Hockey, is Jacob with- breaking up for you, is, or is my internet acting up? Uh, no, it's Jacob. Uh, okay, so he, Jacob's he, getting he has, getting. Yeah, it's Great. getting fucking lucky. <laughs> god it might be a discord um, thing because aki sounded kind of garbly as well just keep going we'll- i was good hmm. yeah. interesting um anyway so yeah so uh so you're not only dealing with this combat uh but there's also a lot of great comedy writing in here to boot um and you know you get to try out the different uh characters that you're playing as uh like the three different uh like friends and stuff and yeah it's just go from point a to point b beat the crap out of everyone learn more moves and uh work your way to the boss and then watch rooms for it's really well done i'm really pleased with it like honestly i this kind of came out of nowhere for me and i highly recommend everyone checks this game out um one other thing to check out is the soundtrack our friend Inverse Phase, Brendan Becker, a.k.a. Mr. Magfest, 
guy who ran it for uh, about a decade in the early days, he did the music on this game. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. the mu- music's Can't good, keep too. out jingles. Indeed. Well, the game clocks in at twenty nine ninety nine. What are your thoughts on Treachery and Beatdown City Ultra Remix? Absolutely. Like, this is one of the year's best games. I'm dead serious. That is high praise. It is. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I love the mix of beat 'em up with RPG elements, like the whole combo aspect and, and throwing combos. And it, it is fair. I thought it was a little on the difficult side. I felt like most of my attacks would whiff or get countered, and they would just kick my ass a lot. Get good, scrub. I know, I have to. You'll never survive Metro City. <laughs> Yeah, well, you'll never survive River City. That's also fair. Yeah. Next game to talk about, Wild Mender, developed by Muse Games, published by Quali, <coughs> released September 28th on Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC for $24.99. A desert gardening survival game. Start from a tiny spring and cultivate a blooming garden. Explore a vast world amid the sands and uncover its mysteries. Can you defend against the relentless forces of nature and mysterious wraith corruption to bring life to a dying world? Jacob and Aki, both of you played this. Aki, how about you start off since Jacob just talked for Treachery and Beatdown City? Okay. He's going to be talking on most of this. I, I played this for probably a couple days, and I didn't really understand what I was doing 90% of the game. Oh, um, crap. Oh, you were like that too, eh? Uh, yes. <laughs> it, at, at first, the game tells you, oh, you need to go do this, and then it shows you what you need to go do by having the things light up and be sparkly or whatever, so you can see, oh, I need to go over there and collect that thing. Oh, I need to do this. And then it sends you off to go do something, but I don't know where the fuck that something is, so I don't. I haven't been able to do it. Um <laughs> And yeah, and, it, and, and I believe it's, it's still like in the it, tutorial. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like a lot of you wandering around in an area that, like, it all looks the same. Like, yeah, I like I don't know. Like, I thought it was kind of interesting, like how I because first off, I don't really play these kind of games. Uh, I I well, what took, kind of game uh, is it? First off, well, it wants to be survival sim. It also wants to be a farming sim. And also, there's like some action adventure stuff to it too. Um, yeah, you get to, like, you, get, you get to climb up things, and you get to beat the shit out of ghost like monsters. Yeah, wraiths. Yeah, they're called wraiths. Yeah, but, but yeah, uh, and it, and it's just like, and so what you have to do is like you have to keep like building up your area and fortifying it. Like, you know, if you have to divert rivers to or springs to, uh, you know grow stuff for your crops uh you can do that well that i actually thought that that was pretty cool uh how you could like do like some mini terraforming uh with this game which i don't know that's really that much terraforming as like basic farm techniques but whatever well you, um, <laughs> you eventually you get uh you get some tools in here uh like you you get a blade to take parts off of uh, to destroy trees and shit but you also get a shovel that you can use to dig down or even put dirt in to raise and lower the level of different yeah. areas so you can actually expand water. And well, that's what I just described. Yeah, but around this tree, there's water that generates every day, I assume. And if you're not drinking it, it just expands more and more and more. So you need to pull it away so it doesn't drown all of the plants that you're growing next to it. <laughs> so That's fair because it also have been drowned. Yeah, because it also does tell you that you need to be uh, like planting your stuff near it. Um, now I had started digging away from the camp and making like a nice little uh, riverbed um, so I could grow my crops alongside of it. But nice. it, I didn't get like I don't know like I feel like, I feel like I didn't get that far in it. Um, and it seemed like it was okay, but like, I like, I wish that the game had more guidance on like where you're supposed to go and like what you're supposed to be doing and stuff. Um, 
and and it really just felt like it like this is a game that if you're going to sit down and play you need to be focusing on this and nothing else like this is going to be like a game that you're like you're going to be playing for like the next couple weeks and like this is your like <laughs> this is all you do yeah because it's, it's uh, just very involved yeah for some of the issue with this uh as stated, some of the things it tells you to go do, and it's very obvious, and it tells you to do something, and you don't know where to go. You get a map in the game, and half the time it might show you where to go on the map for a quest. Other times it doesn't. So then you don't know where the fuck you need to go to finish this quest in order to continue the story to get to the next bit because it's not on the map anyway. And the game doesn't tell you, oh, you need to go to the south or anything. It's just, you need to go to the cliffs. You're in a fucking desert with cliffs every fucking where. That doesn't help. <laughs> That's like being like, oh, you have to dig under the sand. Okay, there's like 50 miles of fucking sand in every direction I go. Where do I dig? Like, it, it is very unhelpful when it comes to this stuff. And it has a map. So it could be helpful, but it isn't. I, I think my biggest issue is they need to make sure everything gets put on the map so you know yeah. where you need to go. <laughs> well, and on top of it, like, I mean, even even simple stuff like uh, be, at the beginning when it was just like, oh, you need to go over that stone right there and like you need to get copper from it. And the thing was, is that like there I am beating up this stone that's not going anywhere. I did that uh, too. Like, like for like five minutes, like waiting, like, cause you see the copper veins on the stone and you're like, Oh, okay. Well, I just have to break up the stone. Cause I mean, you broke up the plants to get sticks. Like, you know, so you're making those connections and then it turns out that the copper is just right there on the ground in front of you. And you just, you just yeah. wasted five minutes of your time. Yeah. You, <laughs> like, can't, you can't break the giant hunk of copper instead you just walk around it and find where there's small pieces of copper that have broken off of it already i'm like you some bit because like i was yeah. like i'm minecrafting the shit this makes sense we just <laughs> minecraft that fucking tree i, I can minecraft it and no and it, because it doesn't tell you it just tells you to go to it and collect the the copper that's it that's all it tells you it doesn't tell you how to do it or anything clearly you two need to get together and try this online co-op gardening sure i don't care I yeah, I mean, maybe. Fine with me. I don't think we're going to get any further. <laughs> I, I, I mean, a confidence. <laughs> there, there, there's also a mystical, spiritual aspect to this. Not just oh the yeah, that race, thing. But there's right. this weird spirit god entity thing that's telling you that's it, part of the tutorial that's telling you what to do. But they're also part of the main story, and you find a fragment of it. And then it tells you to go and find other fragments of it that are on, on cliffs, which is where I couldn't continue because there's cliffs every fucking where and I couldn't find them. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm stuck. And growing plants isn't going to fucking help that. Uh, so I don't know if playing with him, with Jacob, is going to fucking help get <laughs> any further unless he's found them. Um and I have a feeling he hasn't, because that's really the first po point where it's like, hey, go do this. And then there's n nothing. It tells you to, it doesn't tell you to go anywhere. It just says, go to the cliffs. What cliffs? There's <laughs> those cliffs, those cliffs, those cliffs. Oh, those ones over there. Oh, the, how about those ones? Any of the like 30 or 40 different ones within like a 10 mile radius of us, which set? Because you can keep walking past that even, and there's more of them. Oh man! Well, Wild Mender clocks in at twenty five bucks. Uh, what do the two you think of it? I have to go with a pass currently. If they can patch it to tell you where things actually are, so you can do the thing you're supposed to do, then I think it's a try it. But right now, I have to go with pass. I'd put it at a try it. Um, I feel like it's just a game that you just have to be really involved in. And like, as I said, like, this is going to be your focus. Um, I didn't think it was bad. Uh, I just, it needs more guidance uh, for the player, but it, it's definitely not one that I'd be like, Oh, no way. Like it's yeah. Just try it. Cool. 
Uh, I do want to take a, a quick moment to give a shout out to Aki. I thought that putting the desert gardening game would be a cleaner review than the vampire murder game. <laughs> I think that has been the cleanest review I've done was the vampire murder game. <laughs> because we got to keep it clean the rest of the show. Uh, final Hi, game. Aki. <laughs> yep, bye, you guys. <laughs> Final game to talk about is Paw Patrol World, code provided to us as part of the Outright Ambassadors program, uh, developed by 3D Clouds, published by Outright Games, released September 29th on Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, PS4, PS5, and PC for $39.99. Explore the world of Paw Patrol like never before in a 3D action adventure where anything is possible. Play as your favorite pups, drive their vehicles, and save the day by taking on fun rescues and missions. It is the ultimate Paw Patrol playtime. Jacob, tell us about your time with Paw Patrol World. So, I'm not going to lie. Uh, this it, this is possibly the penultimate uh, Paw Patrol game that we've gotten uh, so far, which is a really weird thing for a 38 year old guy to say. Um, <laughs> but I agree. I, I have kids, and I'm also part of the Outright Games uh, brand ambassador program. So I've had to play these games, and they all range from like okay to that was. That was awful, and yes, that should have been DLC. Um, I'm looking at you, Adventure City Calls. Uh, anywho, so in this one, they finally ditched like the simple platforming uh, aspect that three of the games have had, and it becomes this open world mix between. I mean, you're still doing platforming in this, but it's open world platforming. Uh, and uh the driving aspect uh like granted there's no races but it's you know you've got a bunch of quests as of course mayor humdinger and his cats have uh decided to take over various locations in the paw patrol world so he can promote his uh cat or what is it catastrophe catastrophic i don't i forget what what exactly he calls it but anyways he's gonna like he's gonna have his own day to celebrate the uh what are the cat what's the cat patrol the I don't remember. catastrophe crew thank you like i feel like there's an wait i'm sorry what kitten catastrophe crew is that spelled with k's or c's no what oh my god it's okay to hate him, just remember you can't yeah. <laughs> Continue on, Jacob. <laughs> and that's with a K. <laughs> Catastrophe and crew are spelled with C's. I would hope so. I'm just saying I, I like I didn't put that together till just now, man. Anyway I didn't put it together at all. <laughs> well I'm anyway. glad that your I'm glad that your mind is so clean. Anyway. Um, and so, yeah, so Mayor Humdinger is essentially overthrowing local governments so he can promote his thing. Like he goes, like, and so the Paw Patrol has to go to, uh, the jungle, uh, Jake's mountain and Barkingburg, uh, which is essentially London, but with Paw Patrol stuff. Um, and you have to stop him at every single turn, which involves doing a lot of uh, fetch quests and <laughs> fetch <laughs> quests. Get it? <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, so you have to do a bunch of quests and help people. And a lot of it's like reunite the elephant with its baby, like find the ostriches, like a uh, plush toy or whatever, uh, or help like, uh, this kid like get a snack which some of these missions like you kind of question like I mean I know that they're a little repetitive but it's just like help the parrot get down from the tree it's a parrot he can fly he, he, <laughs> he does not need Marshall's maybe he's help. scared no no it but also it's just like you know help this kid get like get a snack and the thing is, is that I one of the things I love about this game is that it's like it just goes through the 24 hour period. Like it's, it's almost like Assassin's Creed for like three year olds. Um, 
And so, like, you could just <laughs> you, you could just stay awake and like experience like a full day cycle. And the thing is, is that people because obviously it's meant for kids. Uh, it's not like, you know, oh, well, you have to be at the park between like 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, to, like to hang out with the kid and like do their fetch quest. The kid is like all the people are there 24 hours a day. And so you get weird moments where it's just like, hey, you need to help this kid find a snack. Uh, it is 2 a.m. Why? Like, why am I not helping this kid get home? And also, yeah, I- where is this kid's parents? I like, don't why understand is this kid the hanging need out? for a day-night cycle in a Paw Patrol game. Eh, I don't know. I thought it was nice. It's cool. Like, it's a I, nice I, addition. I, I just didn't see yeah. the purpose of it. Like, there were there were no daytime-specific oh, or nighttime-specific oh. things. And it's also not, like, it's not like uh, Ocarina of Time where, like, you know, oh, the Paw Patrol has to reset stuff. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> anywho, uh, so, yeah, it, like the gameplay is nothing amazing, but on top of it, there like there is plenty to do in here. Uh, as an adult, like I think I've spent like a total of four hours to beat the game, and that's with doing almost all the missions, finding all the stuff for the pups. Uh, I only have a couple of the of the random side quests that I still have to figure out, which is a little bit of an issue because the game will point out where all the main quests are and the side quests appear on a map, but the game will not tell you which ones you've completed unless you go up to that person and be like, Hey, like what's happening. And then they're like, Oh, do you want to retry the mission or uh, replay the mission? Which of course I'm like, no, I I don't. I'm I'm calling shenanigans on your time estimate. Why? You have 14 hours in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Because I also have a six-year-old who loves okay, Paw Patrol. I, I have four hours in the game, and I'm only on the third area. Okay, again, Out get of, good what, scrap. Four? No, it's not about getting good. Not in no. a Paw Patrol game. It's just yeah, about it is. moving from area to area, pushing button prompts. It's not Dude, about it is, being good. Th- no, no. I, I totally disagree with you on this one. You can breeze through it in about four hours. I disagree. If, like, it's a little. It's, if you claim that you're doing all the side quests and all you know what? everything, it takes longer than four hours to to beat this game. Well, that's what. I, well, yeah, I already oh. just said like I didn't get every single side quest. Um, but you said no, you did the majority. Just let him have this. He has yeah, I did a majority. Yeah, I've did. I've done a majority of them. I yeah, just disagree with your you time know, estimate. All right. Now, you know what? That's fine because uh, I w- was planning on streaming this one random weekend. So, you know what? We can sit down and we will time me. I will start up a new game and we'll go through this. But that's for another okay. time. All right. Fine. Good. Are we making bets on a children's game being played by adults now? Oh, he's the one playing it. So he's a child. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you're making you're making bets on it though, so I didn't bet anything. Mm. Anyway, yeah, Paw Patrol. True. It is it. I am surprised by how solid this game is. I, Espe- I yeah, honestly, just, this. Sorry, I, I have just minor gripes. Uh, I think the the controls in the vehicle could be kind of awkward. Because you have to move forward to move forward, as well as turning. I, I kind of expected like a button to move forward and then turning left and right, not holding forward to move forward. If well, to be to be fair, I think Stevie uh, helped out a certain person with sausage fingers. You that know, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that might have actually been like their solution on that. Um, but. Uh, I like I didn't have any issues with the driving. Like I I thought it was like I don't know. Like I thought it was pretty well done. Uh my main gr- actually not it's not really a grape that I had cuz I was just like all right whatever. Uh one of the gripes that my kids had uh is that for once you actually couldn't go inside like the Paw Patrol headquarters. Um which you know, like my oldest kid was just like can you go in here? I'm like, no, man, you can't do that. Well, that's lame. Can you do this? That's <laughs> like, like, no, you can't do that. Well, why not? And I'm like, 
Cause you're not in the age group for this game, man. Like, <laughs> like and enjoy on top it for of what it, it is, not for what it isn't. Yeah. Well, and on top of it, like we've been inside their headquarters for the like the first three games anyway. Like, I mean, granted, you couldn't walk around, but like it was there as a location that the pups would regularly go into. Would it be nice? Sure, I guess. Like, as something else to explore, but. Like I, there's already a hefty amount of exploration in this game. Yeah. Like I was really surprised by it. Like this, the, like this is a quality title, and this is this game is honestly everything that Adventure City calls should have been. The one thing I want to really praise the developers for is the fact that it's an open world style game, but I didn't think it it feels overwhelming. Like the areas are small enough that you could still explore and get, you know, some time running around and having fun, but it's not like Assassin's Creed where there's a gigantic city that you have to explore through and it takes 20 minutes to get from one end to the other. It's, it's not an overwhelming game. It's like baby's first open world game and it works really well. Yeah. Like the only like, you know, uh, this takes forever kind of thing that I had with it was uh, Barkingberg's Castle Bridge. Like, if you have to go across any bridge, the game makes sure it takes forever. And that might be like a load time issue. Like, you know, they extend the amount of time that you're on the bridge so they can load more of the map. It might be. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, like, it's just, it's honestly really well done for a kid's game. Like, this is... I I can agree with that. I, uh, I, I I was really impressed with this. Like 3D clouds really knocked it out of the park on this one, which is cool because they normally do racing games. So it's cool to see them do a platformer in the and that it works really well. I thought they did all the Paw Patrol games. Did they? I thought they did mostly racing stuff. Maybe I'm thinking of a different company. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm too old. I can't remember stuff. Uh, That's which is true. why I'm not the demographic for this game. But I enjoyed it anyway. It clocks in at forty bucks. Jacob, what's your verdict? absolutely if you've got a kid that loves paw patrol this is and of course christmas is coming up too um but yeah like this is a really well done game and i highly recommend it for uh if you've got kids that like paw patrol and if you, even if you don't like paw patrol get it on next time it's on sale like it is a solid title like i'm not joking about that dare i say it is among outright's best Oh yeah, absolutely. It's easily within the top five. Yeah, this is a really easily. solid one. But uh, all right, that is it for this episode. We made it through. Uh, thanks to you two for being here. Thanks to Bree for coming on, doing her thing. Music this episode, I played one-ups the past few episodes, so I'm just going to play more one-ups so I don't have to change the link on the write-up. Good so job. Lazy. I am very yeah, lazy. Yeah, you are. You uh, are super lazy. Yeah. So let's play some one-ups, and uh, does anyone have any final... Well, Jacob, do you have any final words to end the show? Because Aki might say something bad. I definitely will. Hmm. Uh, mm, nah. Thanks. You're, you're welcome. <laughs>